Hello out there. Welcome to your next mission video podcast. We have a great show for you today that will show how service in the Army can teach skills and lessons that will last for the rest of your life. U.S. Army veteran Patrick Lafferty is here to tell us how the Army changed his life and made him a top marketing and advertising executive. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome to your next mission video podcast, where we tell the stories of those who have served in the past and those who are serving today. From transition to financial wellness, VA benefits to mental health, we cover issues facing veterans, active military, and their families. Now here's your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army and co-founder of the American Freedom Foundation, Jack L. Tilly. Hello out there, warriors past and present, your families. Thank you for your service to our great country. Now, before we get started, I personally want to thank our presenting sponsors, Blue Cross Blue Shield, FEP Dental, and FEP Vision, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue Global, and USAA for, for making your next mission happen. They love our veterans and families. And if you've listened to this show before, I always say we love them too. <laughs> We're going to be talking about what the Army can do, specifically what it did for Patrick and how his service helped him make him a, a person he is today. And, and I'm excited to introduce Patrick Lafferty. We're going to call him Pat all the way through the show, but I'm going to call it right out. Patrick Lafferty, a former Army captain who is now Chief Operating Officer at a marketing cooperative called Acceleration Community Companies, ACC, which offers its clients a wide range of marketing and public relations services. Pat, Patrick, sir, I'm going to give you all the above. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sergeant Major. It is a great privilege to be here and to speak with you. Well, it's a privilege just to have you on the show because we have a relationship that goes back a long ways. But uh, before we get at anything, could you tell the audience just a little bit about yourself? Sure can. Uh, I was uh, lucky enough to be commissioned back in 88 through ROTC at St. Bonaventure um, after uh, Officer Basic and Ranger School headed off to Germany. I was platoon leader, aide de camp over there, and then deployed uh, as a platoon leader over to uh, Desert Storm. Came back to the U.S. to Fort Drum, New York, home of the 10th Mountain Division. There I was uh, lucky enough to be company commander and deployed to uh, Panama and to Haiti. Um, after seven years in the service, uh, I got out and went into corporate America, um, where I've been for, gosh, uh, many, many years, 25 plus years now, <laughs> um, both on the agency side and on the uh, brand marketer side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, I, I, usually everybody, anytime I ask them how many years people added to the service, and they always say, you know, 20, 25, and 30, and because I had 36. And I always say, anybody less than that, I always say quitter. But I know you didn't quit. I know you uh, you liked the military. I'm not going to say that today. Sir, what, yes. what, what motivated you to join the Army? I mean, what, uh, you know, what stuck out to make you go and be all you could be, I guess? Well, originally, I'll be honest, our major, it was money for college. My dad sat me down when I was a sophomore in high school and said, uh, you know, obviously I want you to be able to go away to school. If it's on me, you're going to be going to the community college uh, and then we'll figure it out uh, from there. And he said, and there's this um, opportunity with ROTC to have a scholarship. So I uh, applied and was lucky enough to get the scholarship and that allowed me to uh, go away to uh, college and join ROTC. Once I got in, I absolutely loved it. Um, and uh, frankly, I would have done it without the scholarship. Uh, but the original motivation was to get that college education. Well, you just brought it up. What'd you love about the Army? I, I it, Usually people tell me it's just about the people. What do you love about the Army? Yeah, I, I would say the, the teamwork and camaraderie and um, working with folks to accomplish um, sometimes seemingly impossible tasks, um, it, it, incredibly rewarding. Yeah. You know, it's really, I always tell people uh, when I went in the military, I went from 18 to 55. Of course, I went basic AIT jump school and then I went right to war, but uh, it changes your life. What, what, what made it such a good fit for you? I mean, was it a good fit for you when you was in the service? A hundred percent. I mean, uh, it, it, taught me so many things. I, I could say that I learned every day, every week from the soldiers and NCOs that I served with, as well as uh, the you know, officers above me. Um, it, 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 I think it 
throws you into so many different challenges, so many different situations. Um, certainly you get great training, but part of it is just, you know, figuring stuff out when you're thrown into it and adapting and overcoming and, um, you know, working with folks to, to figure out the impossible. Yeah. I always tell people that, uh, you know, when you raise your hand as protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, there is no second best. I mean, if I'm number two, I'm going to pay with it for my life. And, uh, you know, that's, that's important to understand. And, and I think, I don't think a lot of people really understand that. I mean, a lot of people really don't see active duty soldiers. So it's a, it's sort of a, sort of a, a good feeling. And again, like you, it changed my life. It made me probably a, a better person than, than I would have been if I probably wouldn't have went in. So, you know, one of the questions I always used to get, and I, people always used to ask me, says, do you change the platoon or for yourself? Did the company change or do you change? I mean, is there, is there something in there for you? I mean, uh, what changes? Uh, a, a lot changes. Um, I, I'd say the first time I deployed as a platoon leader, um, I met the families, um, you know, a couple weeks after I met the soldiers for the first time that I was going to be leading. And I'll never forget, uh, Mary Smith was her name, spouse of Sergeant Smith, stood up early in the meeting and she said to me, how old are you and how long have you been doing this? <laughs> uh, and believe me, that landed hard. And I, yeah. I mean, you know, I took that responsibility very seriously and thought of her and the other uh, family members many a time when we were over in the desert. But, you know, that's certainly one area that changes and you evolve and you grow um, with that responsibility um, that, that you, you know, take into a deployment like that. Yeah. You, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I read all these books all the time and leaders are always up front. And there's a reason why they're up front because they want to lead by example and show people that, uh, you know, what we're doing is important, but I want to make sure I take care of you. Have you ever had something that uh, that maybe you said a minute ago, one of the things a spouse has said, anything a soldier ever said to you that sort of stuck with you too? I oh, mean, uh, I mean, yeah, I would say uh, constantly. I mean, I, I, and I, you know, it's funny, Sergeant Major, I would say there was the first thing that popped in my mind when you asked that question was a soldier that I actually had to discipline um, that had gotten a little carried away uh, and uh, was uh, misbehaving a little bit. And he and I spent some time together uh, talking about it. And, uh, you know, we, we went, went on a little run together, actually, to uh, kind of have that conversation. Um, years afterwards, uh, when I was at another duty assignment, um, you know, I met someone who had served with this soldier, and I asked about uh, that soldier. And he had gone on to do incredible things and yeah. had been promoted, I think, three times uh, since he left the unit that we served in together. And so, you know, I'd like to think that, uh, you know, our interactions, uh, you know, had a little positive effect and was a part of how he then was able to, uh, you know, go and succeed in his next duty assignment. Yeah, I, you know, I'm sure it is because sometimes uh, the interaction you have with people, you don't, you don't know. I mean, just... Uh, it's not a simple thing, but just running and talking and, and allowing him to be part of your life uh, for that four, I don't know how far you ran, but for four or five miles, uh, but you, you get a chance to relax and be who you are. And, and you know, you're not, the, you're the company commander, you always be the company commander, but, but you're in a sort of a personal space where it allows him to sort of open up about how he feels about whatever and, and how you feel about whatever. And, and it's, I think, Sometimes as leaders, we have a tendency to, to put a wall in front of our face and don't allow people to see you. And I think it's important to, uh, to people to see you. I, I did something the other day. I, I was talking to you like this. I was talking to a group of lawyers up in D.C. And, uh, and I'm real open about post-traumatic stress. You know, I've been to have, you know, certain things I talk about. Sometimes I, I tear up or it's hard for me to, uh, to get through them. And, uh, and the question was, uh, uh, why, do, why are you so open about it? And I said, well, they says, uh, I need people to, to understand that I, <clears throat> I'm no different than they are. I have issues just like everybody, and, and war affects us all in the same way. And so for people to understand as a, a senior non-commissioned officer, I do have those issues or concerns. Uh, maybe they'll open up a little more. The other thing I, I told them is, uh, you know, I came back from war angry and, and really I'm not bitter. I wouldn't say bitter about anybody, but I was just, it wouldn't take much to, to, uh, uh, to excite me or to get me angry about something. So I really had to learn how to pull back a little bit. I, I don't know. You said you had a lot of deployments. I don't know if you felt the same way. 
No, I can relate definitely. Um, you know, and I think uh, helping each other, yeah, um, uh, through that um, is important. Uh, working with families and helping them also, because obviously they share um, in the 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 challenges uh, that soldiers face when they come back, and are are often their you know their first and their closest counselors, if you will, to uh, to help them readjust. Yeah. You know, as, as I as I asked before we got on the show here, but I look back and I've seen your flag, you know, behind you about you know, your current commander. That's that's certainly important. That's a big part of your life. Why why did you uh, why did you decide to leave the army? I mean, is there a reason that you jumped out of there? Yes, I mean, I'd say as a particularly as a MP, um, it was clear that uh, in addition to the deployments that I had, that the the way. The world was going and the types of missions uh, that the army needed to engage in MPs were going to continue to be front and center um, in the execution of a variety of missions uh, globally. So it was clear to me, I guess, that I was going to be deployed uh, a lot. Um, and by the time I decided to get out with my family, we had two kids. We then had two more. Um, so it really was a decision that we made so that I could be a bit more present um, you know, after that seven years uh, for my family and with my family. Yeah, I, I tell people all the time that, uh, first of all, that's I think that's a great decision. I, I, I got out, stayed out, of, you know, a couple of years and then went back in. But uh, I tell people all the time, I did not even watch my kids grow up. Uh, my mm -hmm. kids went from four years old to 24 years old. And, and I look back in my life now and I I think, you know, did I mess up? And then I think, well, you know, everybody's got to take their road and stuff. But I think uh, that's, that for you, it was a good decision. I, for me, it was a good decision, too. But I wish I'd have had a little more time with my kids as girls. But now I have grandkids, and I can spoil <laughs> them and do all that stuff now and, and uh, help them out just as much as I can. So I, I certainly appreciate it. Sir, this is a great discussion. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. So hold that thought. I know you're not going to go anywhere. We just got you on camera. You're not going to go anywhere. So hold that thought. <laughs> We're talking with Pat Lafferty about his time in the Army and how it helped him become the person he is today. If you're enjoying this discussion, I know that you are because we're talking about military kind of things with all of us. We love it. Please like us. Click on that subscribe button below and click on the bell to receive notifications of all of our upcoming video podcasts. Sir, we've been talking about uh, your time in the Army. Do you miss it? I do. I uh, certainly <laughs> miss uh yeah, I miss the camaraderie, uh, miss the, I think I'd say the the greater sense of purpose. I mean, the, you yeah. know, what we were doing and what we were engaged in really made a difference in the lives of the people that we were helping um, globally um, and in certainly in, in, in bigger geopolitical issues as well. Yeah, yeah. I got to ask this other question. Do, do you ever wish you'd have stayed in? Uh, yeah, there are times. Be honest now. Be yeah, honest. Sorry, there are. There certainly are. You know, particularly. I mean, I find when there's things that are happening in the world yeah. uh, that you see, and you're like, "Gosh, I just there's a part of me that feels like I should be doing something to uh, to help." Yeah, you know, it's funny when uh, Desert Storm started. I was uh, down at Fort Knox in 194th. I don't know if you know the 194th. It was the uh, largest, one of the largest. I think there was only 194th and 197th. But it had 6,000 plus soldiers, but we was deactivating. And during, during Desert Storm, we was deactivated at the same time. So they started taking individual replacements. And I'd go down to the airplane uh, when people were going to the, to the uh, desert. And I'd you know, help soldiers get on the plane, make sure they're squared away. And I remember I went down there one time and uh, I got on the plane. It was all loaded up. And uh, this guy, had been young soldier I'd been playing cards with, it was uh, crying. Ah, tore me up. So I got back off and told the commander, I said, look, uh, I, I, the way I, I guess the way I said it was, I'm not going to sit on the bench. I, I put me in the game. I want to be in the fight. Uh, so I went back and, and, uh, and called Branch and said, hey, look, uh, I, I'm a brigade sergeant major, but I'll take anything. I'll, I'll be a company first sergeant, but I want to be part of the, the fight. And so... Of course, he said, no, we don't have no other side. I said, I don't care. I'll be a platoon sergeant. Put me in there somewhere. But uh, by the time I said that, I was talking to him, the war was over. So it sort of irritated me a little bit. Uh, yeah. So we're talking, uh, I don't know, uh, I guess probably most people, just like you just said, like feel the same way about, uh, you know, it just, 
it just bothers me. Even today, uh, when I see stuff and deployments on television, stuff going on, I always, uh, always wanted to say, wow, I'm too old now to get back in a fight, but I'd love to get back in there. Yes, yeah, Storm Ranger. Uh, you know, my, my similar, my story is similar in Desert Storm. I was an aide de camp, um, actually, when uh, uh, things started happening over there, and there was a platoon down the street that from our that uh, the uh, one of the lieutenants couldn't deploy, and so you know, I, I volunteered as well for uh, for that deployment. Yeah, sir. Since we're talking about how the Army helped make you uh, who you are today, how important. Was your 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 I guess your army background getting you your you know your first civilian job was that important or did it help? It, it was incredibly. I would say you know, next to my parents, the army certainly made me who I am and is the foundation of the success that I have had. I mean the you know the being thrown into situation after situation and learning and learning in in rapid succession and being able to you know. Uh, try different things and to evolve and grow um, in a in a relatively short period of time, just it set me up for success. Incredibly so. What, was it the uh, and probably the team building, the leadership, the uh, you know, even effective counseling, and did a lot of the small things that probably in most civilian corporations, I'm not sure they do all those things that you did as a. I, how old do you say he was when you went there? I mean, uh, when you got out, I guess 25, 26? When I got out, I was 29. 29. I was so, yeah you, yeah, you went through a lot of stuff and probably grew really fast than a lot of other executives in the in the civilian market. Oh, 100%. And, you know, you mentioned teamwork, leadership, communication. Um, you just get to do so much of it at a young age, and you get so much responsibility at a young age that you mature and grow and, you know, make mistakes and learn from those and then be able to, to uh, do better and continue to improve and grow such that when you get into a situation in the, the corporate world, um, while you still need to learn all the technical aspects of the job, um, you've got that foundation of how to work with folks and how to get things done that can be applied, frankly, to, to any profession. Yeah. I, I I wasn't going to ask you this question, but just made me think about some. Did you ever think you intimidated people uh, just being in the military, coming out of the military with some of the some of the things that you've learned in the military, and then you get into the corporate world? You think you intimidate some of the people that maybe not have served? Yes, I mean, I, even though I mean, I don't think of myself as intimidating, uh, but uh, yes, I would say there is some of that, and you have to, um, you know, like any leader, you have to uh, evolve and grow and under and meet people where they are and understand you know their situation the best way that they work and 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 find success and and you know it's always a give and take uh, in a, in a leadership situation but yeah i think the intimidation as well as the i guess the stereotypes that uh you know people who have not served bring to any relationship with someone that they that, that has served they think the army or the military is one thing they think it's you know, people just giving orders and following orders. And I would say that, frankly, the Army was the most democratic organization I've ever been a part of, meaning, you know, because the stakes are so high, you have to lead authentically. You have to uh, legitimately lead. You can't fake it, you know. And in corporate world where the stakes aren't as high, um, bad leaders can exist for a period of time, for a longer period of time. Um, and, and be allowed, if you will, to go on, where, frankly, that just wasn't uh, tolerated in, in the Army because of what was at stake. Yeah. Did, did, did you think people uh, in, your, in your company, did they uh, go to you first about stuff? Uh, did you stick out in the crowd or anything like that? Uh, I, I think for certain things, yes. Uh, my very first boss, I give her, her a ton of credit. Her, uh, Lauren Harlow is her name. And she uh was able somehow at 26 i think she was like i said i was 29 she had the maturity to lead me in a way that she allowed me to do things that she knew i could do that were different from my peers um in in a similar level and then while she taught me all the things that i needed to learn and i give her a ton of credit for finding that balance and for uh helping me succeed because it could have gone very wrong, frankly, to go from leading 140 people to being at the very bottom of the totem pole 
and 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 you know doing very I guess basic skills um, in order to learn them. So she found that balance and helped me in a way that set me up for success moving forward. Yeah, I think I felt one point one point three million and then nothing. So I felt yes. really. <laughs> yes. Hey, hey, so I want to talk about some other skills you learned in the army, but that helped. But you even now, but uh, but first we need to take another commercial break. So stay right there. This is a great discussion. I certainly I certainly am learning a lot from you. So appreciate it. You're watching your next mission video podcast. So don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're watching your next mission video podcast, proudly presented by. Navy Federal Credit Union, the most trusted credit union owned by members of the military community, serving all branches of the armed forces and their families. Their members are the mission. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Purdue Global, you're ready for a comeback, and with Purdue Global, you can do more than take classes, you can take charge of your story, of your career, of your life. Earn a degree you can be proud of and get an education employer's respect. Start your comeback at PurdueGlobal.edu. USAA. Oh. A promise is a trust not to be broken. Right, Whether spoken with an oath swear. or sealed with a pinky. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission, always. Now back to your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly. Welcome back. We're blessed to be here today with marketing advertising executive Patrick Lafferty. Remember, this is your show. Tell us about your transition. Tell us which topics you like as a cover. I mean, I just said to me, it's your show. I want to know what the what your needs are. You can call or text me at 844-424-1134 or send me an email at uh, smatilly at yournextmission.org. And guess what? I'll reach back out to you. Pat, Patrick, sir, whatever we're going to talk about, you've uh, reached top level, levels of advertising in the public relations field. How do you think the Army helped you, you know, set you up for success? And I think we talked a little bit about that before, but, but tell me about all the stuff the Army, you know, showed you to make you successful in that civilian market or taught you, yeah. I guess. I could list many skills. I think uh, the top of the list would be perspective. Yeah. Um, meaning that uh, whatever it is that we are working through and trying to solve, um, the perspective that it is solvable and that uh, we can work through it and that no matter how difficult or bad it may seem, um, you know, <laughs> it's only going to be temporary. I mean, uh, you know, all the way from ranger school all the way through my deployments, you know, if you were cold or hungry or tired, you know, you know, it seemed like it went on forever. You know, those those challenges and 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 learnings about yourself and about human nature and the people that you worked with um, are a hundred percent applicable um, in the business world. Yeah. Well, what would you say to a, a young man or young woman uh, that uh, may wake up not just in the army but other branches of service about joining the military? What would you What would you say to him? You say it's a. I'm certainly saying it was a good idea, but what would you say to him? It, it was tremendous. I mean, and no, yeah, I think your motivations initially and what you're looking for and what your needs are, maybe one thing, maybe it's money for college, maybe it's particular skills, um, maybe it's uh, the ability uh, to, to work with other people. Um, but once you get in, the, the learning just exponentially grows from there. And what it means to you as a person will change and evolve and grow as well. But, you know, I would say get beyond the stereotypes or perhaps the misunderstanding of what it is. Um, go in and it will change your life for the better and teach you about yourself, teach you about others, and, and teach you about the, the world and life. Yeah. I, I don't know if you know it or not, but I was a, I went the best kid in the world when I was a little kid. Hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 uh, but I graduated from high school. I remember I was sitting on a beach. Don't anybody listen to this, but I was, I was drinking something I probably shouldn't have been drinking. And somebody said, uh, what are you going to do with your life? And I said, I have no earthly idea. He said, and he said, do you want to go to college? You got to listen to this. And I said, guys like me don't go to college. Wow. Okay. So then the second guy said, hey, you want to join the army? 
I said, sure, why not? I didn't even know the Army was fighting a war. <laughs> so, so I went basic AIT jump school. And uh, I mean to tell you that, uh, I, like I said before, I went from 18 to 55. And uh, the other thing I think was interesting, too, when I came back uh, and I went back to my hometown, I, I, I almost didn't fit in if that makes sense to you. I mean, because mm -hmm. uh, I'd grown so much, I thought, uh, but people just sort of stayed, stayed at the same level. So it was a little bit different. I don't know if you felt the same way when you went back to your hometown. Uh, yeah, it certainly grew and matured. And, uh, you know, it's starting with uh, ROTC and the incredible, you know, cadets and cadre that I had there. I think, um, you know, they deserve a lot of credit for taking me under their wing uh, for helping me learn and to grow and, you know, kicking my butt when it needed kicking <laughs> and, uh, you know, and challenging me to push beyond what I thought was possible. Um, and then I, you know, was able to take that um, into the, into the army, certainly. And yeah, you, you, you go back and you um, interact with folks, uh, certainly from your past and, you know, many have done great and different things. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would, I, I would, do it all over again, and then some. You know uh, how it was able to set me up for success um, in in life and in in uh, the working world. Yeah, are you still a big part? Of, is the army still uh, you know part of your life? A big part of your life, I guess. Uh, absolutely, um, in many ways. I just was uh, my son and I went out to the uh, Army Air Force game in, in Denver and watched Army win. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yes. like, uh, yeah. They weren't supposed to win that either. What was it, like 31 no, it to 3 or fantastic. something? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were, funny enough, we were there staying and visiting uh, another veteran who uh, you know, Dave Trifoletti, yeah. who we did not serve together. We actually worked together after the Army in, yeah. in corporate America. So, you know, even... You know, I've stayed in touch with many folks who I served with and that I've met many more folks who've served um, in, in various stages of my life, if you will. And, um, you know, they, they, they all continue to play an important role in, uh, in my life. Yeah. I got, uh, you know, this is a great, I got to ask you one more question before I ask you about final thoughts. How important was it the NCO and officer relationship for you in the Army? Uh, your Incredible. first arm, your, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, incredible. I mean, you, you know, you're a young lieutenant. I mean, you think you know more than you do, uh, but you hopefully um, I had enough humility to understand that there was a lot I didn't know yeah. and leaning on and learning from those non-commissioned officers. You know, my, I, I mean, I very vivid memories, my, my first platoon sergeant, my first first sergeant, um, you know, incredible person who taught me a lot um, and who, you know, had a had a respect for young officers that you felt um and but but could teach you so so very much so uh, incredible respect i would not be who i am without you know, the non-commissioned officers that helped shape me i said it was going to be the last question but a total lie i got one more right <laughs> hey uh do you, do you stay in contact with anybody i mean uh, that you ncos or officers that you was connected with in the military I, yeah i certainly do um you know from rtc through all of my service um you know stay in close contact with uh, many folks and we you know tailgated army navy together to this day so well, that's pretty cool. Hey, yeah. first of all, thanks for being on the show. I, it just it's it, it's incredible. And thank you for your service. Uh, thank however you, small it was, no, no, go ahead. Thank you. For, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your service. Hey, any final thoughts? Anything you want to share with you? Anything that that anything you want to say to the audience that you want to know about your time in the military, or anything you want to tell them? Well, I would just say thank you. Thank you for this program. Thank you for continuing to spread the word and help folks see and learn and grow from the service uh, of others um, and, and apply it to their life. I think it's super valuable. Well, I just want to say thank you for just coming on the show and taking a, a few minutes. I, I wish I probably could talk to you for a couple hours about some of this stuff, but uh, thank you for what you've done, what you continue to do. And, and uh, you know, I tell veterans all the time when I see veterans, make sure you tell your story. Uh, tell people in, the, in this country about, you know, the things you did in the military. It's so important for people to, uh, to understand about the sacrifices our veterans and the, uh, you know, service members have made and the families have made for this country. So just thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Sergeant Major. I appreciate it. Thanks again to Pat Lafferty for being our guest today. I'm Jack Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major of the Army. You've been watching... 
your next mission video podcast. And thank you for joining us. Log on to our website at yournextmission.org and leave me a review. I hope it's a good review. But if it's a bad one, I'm not going to read it anyway. No, I'll read it, but send it to me. While you're there, you can visit our nonprofit, our corporate partners, and who have jobs and services that are available. They can assist you in your transition from the military. And there's always an end to everything. And we just added a, a new job board, partnership with Recruit Military, where you can search for a, a job that's a perfect fit for you. Check out this video on our website to learn how to fine tune your search. You can also create your own individual profile. Scan the QR code on the screen or our website to create your profile. All information collected is confidential and won't be shared with anyone. Please know we want to help you any way we can. You can follow me on my personal social media pages. Never thought I'd ever say this. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Rumble. And if you've enjoyed or you liked what we're doing your next mission, click on that subscribe button below. And don't forget to click on the bell to receive notifications about our upcoming video podcast. Don't forget, we want to hear from you. Please leave me a message or send me a text at 844-424-1134 or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. Thanks again to Pat Lafferty. It was just Absolutely great having him on the show. And, and Pat brought up a lot of, Patrick, Pat, sir, whatever we want to call him today, but he brought up a lot of really great things. You know, most people don't know anything about the military. They think they do. And they, here's the, I'm going to give you a few ways that uh, most people try to figure it out. You could either uh, watch the news, read a book, watch a movie, check the internet, or word of mouth. That's how they learn about the military. I tell you, if you want to learn about the military, talk to a veteran. Sit down and talk to somebody that served. You hear all this stuff about, you know, what's good and what's bad. I would tell you, and, and Pat just told us too, that the Army changed my life. It made me who I am today. And I, hopefully, it's a better person. If you join or you check it out and you do go in, if it's the Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, Space Force, whatever you want to go in, check it out. If you do join, I guarantee you, you'll be a changed person for the better. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks to New Mind Studios and of course, our presented sponsors, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, FEP Dental, and FEP Vision, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue Global, and USAA. We appreciate all you do for our military. And as always, see you on the high ground. hoo -ah! You've been listening to Your Next Mission, brought to you by the American Freedom Foundation. Learn more by visiting yournextmission.org.